Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, it's going to be returning to the Bellator cage. Come up here on Friday night, August 25th, Bellator 182, Fernando Gonzalez. He takes on Brandon Ward. Fernando, as always, man, I appreciate the time. What's been going on since uh, that victory back in March? Uh, man, I've been I've been training full time, man. I've been in the gym, getting better and sharpening my tools. Uh, I, honestly, as soon as I knew I, I had Ward, I, I big ass smile on my face, man. This guy's tough, and, and he's gonna allow me to showcase more of my skills. He, he's a banger, and he comes to give an exciting fight, and that's the kind of fights I like. In terms of you know getting a smile immediately when you know this is going to be the fight, is it just simply because of his style, or was it somebody that maybe was already on your radar that you kind of felt like, hey, this is a matchup I want? Oh, for sure. Me and actually, me and him had actually talked on Twitter before uh, um, about getting a fight together. You know, uh, I had posted on there like, hey, I'm open. I want to take a fight, and I posted his name, Lima, and all the other guys that that. You know, I want to fight eventually, and he was one of the ones that responded, say, "Hey, let's let's get down." You know, or so yeah, it's something that I already had in mind that I eventually I was going to fight him, and you know, he's one of the best. Just all the guys at the top ten are, are good fighters and great fighters, and I want to go out there and prove that I can beat them. I think when a lot of people think about the welterweight division, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't agree with me. I feel like you're kind of a name that, that flies underneath the radar. Do, do you feel that way of, like, people don't understand the fact that you are 6-1 and one in this division? I, of course, but that's a lot of that, like like I've said before on other uh, interviews, is by, by the marching. If you see all the guys that I've beaten, they're all top guys. Uh, you know, Martin Zaramska is a tournament champion. Carl Parisian, you know, he was in line to fight for a title in the UFC. So really it's been about how they marketed me. It was always me fighting guys that were supposed to beat me. So they always marketed those guys and not so much, you know, I was the other guy, you know. <laughs> but now they're starting to, you know, the, the script's trying to flip where they're starting to see that I'm, I'm a legit contender and they're really getting behind me and pushing me on this fight. So uh, honestly, I'm really happy that they're, they're finally starting to kind of see that, that, I'm going to be the, the champion. Eventually, I will be the champion. They're not. There's nothing that they can do or, or say about that, you know? Ideally, how would you want people to promote you, whether it's Bellator or, or anyone inside the MMA industry? I mean, how would you want people to think of Fernando Gonzalez? Uh, well, they, 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 they've been actually doing that now. You know, my last uh, the build up to the fight, they, they've stated. Fernando has beat six of, you know, this many guys. So they're actually putting the names and the guys that I've beaten. These, all the guys that I've fought are legit fighters. And they all did some at some point, you know what I mean? So I think with that, I'm getting more and more fans already just from those little little clips. The one that, that helped me the most in that um, on the New York card, they advertised our fight. And, and that was a big jump in my in my uh, popularity there where people are starting to see, like, who is this guy? You know, obviously they're advertising us on a big show, so he must be a, a good fighter. And uh, I think people are starting to take notice more now, and it's it's because of that push, which I've been asking for for, for a long time. But like I said, it was all guys that should have beaten me, but I had to go out there and prove them wrong and let them know that I'm the guy that they need to be backing, and they're starting to do that now. Brennan obviously is a guy that doesn't waste any time in the cage. He's actually only made it to the third round once in his career. That was all the way back in 2012, uh, you know, first and second round throughout his career. He's coming off that loss against Paul Daly. Because of how that fight ended, do you think at all that he might come out a little tentative in this fight, or are you expecting the guy that's going to be balls to wall and he's coming right at you? I think he's gonna he's gonna come at me still. You know, I, I think um, if he sits back, it's really out of his element. He's not used to that. It's not how he likes to fight. You know, he likes to go out there and give a good show, and he's really that that style of killer be killed. But you know, I am prepared for that just in case. And I'm 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 more of the distance fighter, so if anything, that's gonna favor me. It gives me more time to see his opening, see what he's making mistakes on, and I'll be able to capitalize. But uh, I do expect him to blitz on me. That's that's what I'm training for as well. 
Brennan, along with being known for his striking, he has that wrestling background. I mean, is that one of the kind of things of like, look, I, I know this guy wants a bang, but I, I've got to be ready for the wrestling. I mean, is that part of the mentality heading into this fight? Always. I, I do that with everybody just because I know once I start landing my hands, they eventually take me down or try to get me to the ground. So it, it's it's not so much that it's Brandon Ward, it's anybody that I fight that if I put my hands on them, they, they're going to start to feel the power and understand that they probably need to get it to the ground at some point. So I see that happening in this fight, but very similar to my Brandon Gertz fight, um, you know, he's going to get me down and he's going to realize that it's not the smartest thing to do that. And eventually we're going to end up back on the feet and, and I'll break him down and finish. I know you've talked about in the past of, you know, you know, you, you tend to, to come on a, as the fight goes on. I mean, and, you know, fans are always looking for those quick stoppages. Uh, you know, are you even thinking about that at all in terms of trying to get the quick win here? Or is the mindset, look, I'm just going there to kind of do what I got to do to get the win? My fights are always, always exciting. So my style is my style. And they got to, the, the fans got to start to realize that this sport's evolving. The guys that used to just go out and get knockouts is because, you know, they were either lacking in certain areas and, and that's why it happens. You know, most guys that are getting knocked out are they're either mostly primarily ground guys that are learning striking. So once I'm more of a boxer, I grew up boxing and, and learned my kickboxing and MMA and wrestling all all around the same time that I started MMA. But my main thing was boxing. With that, you have to sit back, look for your openings, and break these guys down. And that's my style. I, I like to do that. And I, I know that fans are going to start to see that more, and, and they're starting to like that more. They, so long as I'm, I'm constantly working and giving them a, a good show, they're going to continue to want to watch me fight. And that's what I'm doing. This car being built up about the welterweight main event, co-main event, both welterweight matchups. Do you kind of view like this is that basically the winners of the main event, co-main event, will will meet in a number one contenders matchup? It could, but it's really going to de- decide, I think, on who can who's going to give that best performance, where the fans actually want you to fight. You know, they they want you, they want to see you fight for the belt, and I think that's kind of how Bellator is running their their marketing right now because if you go off rankings, I, I probably should have had a title shot already um, mm. just with the amount of guys that I had bought, uh, beat and stuff. So they're not really going off of the rankings. They're going on, on what the fans want to see, the, the style of fights that they want to, you know, uh, kind of view. So uh, that's why all these guys from UFC are getting title shots right away. You know, they're – They've never even fought in Bellator, but they get a title shot right away because the fans know who they are mm-hmm. and the fans want to see them fight. So Roy McDonald's up next, and then after that, whoever gives a better showing between uh, Korshkov and, and Chitty and me and Ward, I think I think that's how it's going to be determined. Have you moved on from Michael Page, or is that still a fight that you, you definitely want to get back? Um, that's. Honestly, I'd rather get my title shot first because uh, he's good enough to stay at distance. But I know once I have that fourth and fifth round, mm-hmm. he's not gonna cut. He's not gonna cut it. You know, it's that style of fighter. You definitely need time to, to wear him down. If you rush in, basically, you know, I hate to throw him under the bus, but how um, Judy Ben knocked out uh, Andre Fiello. You know, um, mm-hmm. I think he felt the pressure from me fighting MVP. That I was, you know, I, I didn't rush in to to get this guy to the ground or, or to knock him out right away like everybody wants, and I actually made him fight. So when he fought, you know, I think he almost had that pressure where he had to go in and make it exciting and, and you know got himself caught with those those rangy guys. You have to you have to be able to box and be able to stay on the outside and, and make them work with you. And, of course, you're going to be able to see Fernando fight here in the co-main event of Bellator 182 coming up on Friday night, August 25th, live on Spike TV beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Of course, it's taking place in New York State. Fernando, as always, man, I appreciate time. And let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Uh, yeah, man, um, at, at Man Into Maniac on Twitter and Instagram. And on Facebook, my fan page is Fernando the Man Into, the Man Into Maniac Gonzalez. 
So those, those are my uh, social media that you guys can find me on. Um, and uh, obviously, if I, if I can, please uh, thank my, my sponsors and, and my, my team. Uh, Dr. Toy Chiropractic, Heritage Tattoo, uh, 2XL Inc., r and Roofing, Rock Solid Nutrition, Precision Tune, Auto Care, uh, Venom Fight Gear, who's, who's sponsoring me for this fight, and hopefully in the future as well. Uh, as far as the plastering, CVAC, and SoCal Fresh Prep. And uh, my team, uh, Ajay Alvarado, Tom Galicchio, my brother, uh, Tristan Hernandez, and um, Ricardo Benuelos, Nick Vega, and Paul Webb, all the guys that have been in the room helping me get ready for this fight. Thank you guys, and uh, let's get the win August 25th.